Hi, it's Andrew here. The idea for today's video is just to discuss which libraries we use in production and closure. So uh, if you're just starting with the language, you know what you should use or what you shouldn't. Um, I've been a developer for 10 years. I started as a Java developer and after that I switched to Clojure because I really enjoyed the language and the functional programming in general. Uh, so after that, uh, it's been uh, almost seven years now when I'm doing the Clojure uh, full time and um, I gained some experience with that. So I just want to share with you I think these kind of videos will be really useful for beginners and who just um, starting their um, closure journey and it definitely uh, would be really useful for me when I started because uh, the selection of libraries is really wide and you don't uh, really know which is a good choice and which is not and I would like to see this kind of video when I started just to have some guidance uh, which libraries I should pick uh, in my project. So the, before we start, uh, let's mention one thing. So I know there are uh, projects uh, in the Clojure ecosystem that's supposed to be web frameworks, uh, but I highly recommend if you're just starting uh, first time, try to combine some libraries uh, which you need and build it from the scratch. Uh, so yeah, the learning curve uh, will be different and you'll spend a bit more time, but it's really useful uh, knowledge, at least to know how all these pieces works together. If you enjoy the framework later, that's fine. Uh, but if we're talking about production code, uh, to be honest, I never seen these frameworks were used in real production code. It was always some kind of combination of libraries uh, that evolves with the microservices as they as they need. All right, so how do we even create the project and how we manage the dependencies that we need? In my opinion, there are two solid options. One is Leningen and one is depths.edn. Uh, Until recently, all our projects were managed by Leningen. But uh, we started ex experimenting uh, with depths.edn. We have some good results. And I think uh, for the new projects, uh, depths.edn will be our new st standard. So there is nothing wrong uh, to use Leningen. It works just fine. Uh, no complaints. Uh, the, the only thing to mention is, according to the uh, closure state survey, uh, the trend uh, for the Leningen is actually going down uh, compared to the depths.edn that's going up. And considering that uh, depths.edn is actually a part of the closure, um, it makes sense to try that uh, or and at least like um, make yourself familiar with depths.edn. Uh, so you won't be surprised if you see more and more projects using that in future. Uh, so it was also um, a time when it was more like Leningen versus boot. Uh, but in 2023, I highly don't recommend spend your time uh, learning or trying boot. So to recap, uh, if you're planning to, uh, if you're using Leningen already, or you don't, and you don't want to spend time rewriting it to depths.edn, that's totally fine. That will work. Uh, uh, work as expected, uh, you won't have any problems, but uh, for the new projects and services, uh, I would consider depths.edn. Moving on, and the next topic is how we managing components in our system. So in real world applications, we have a bunch of uh, parts of the system of the service that we should worry about. Uh, it usually uh, we'll have some kind of HTTP server, then we have uh, database connection pools, then we have Kafka consumers and other processes that should be started, uh, and also different types of caches, and the list can go on and on. And we need some, uh, some way uh, to manage that uh, start and stop logic, so we don't have to care about uh, the order and dependencies. So 
the first thing you can, you can think about is uh, to do it yourself. So just in main function, uh, you can define what to start in which order. Uh, and that's totally fine for small projects. Uh, for bigger projects, you just don't, don't want to mess with that uh, too much. And you just want to rely on some kind of library that will do it for you. So it will just add a bit of structure to your application and it will be easier for everyone to understand how exactly dependency works inside your uh, service. So let's start with one that I don't really recommend and it's Mount. Uh, the biggest problem I see with this library is actually that it allows uh, the developers to write a quite bad code from my opinion. So the state uh, like these components uh, are basically global. So nothing is uh, preventing developers to um, directly use that uh, state inside uh, somewhere inside uh, their functions. And it basically just ruins the entire uh, concept of functional programming when you have a function and everything you need to pass to that function is defined by the arguments. So that's my biggest problem with this library and I don't really recommend it. Plus, uh, I never seen it used in production um, uh, where I worked. So moving on to good options from my uh, point of view and they are component library or the integrant library. So we are using mostly component everywhere. Uh, we are starting experimenting with the integrant uh, but there is not much update yet. So um, my recommendation will be just to uh, check both, uh, compare them and select what you like, but it feels like both are solid choices. So you won't do a mistake uh, if you pick one of those. Cool, the next topic should be a quick one. Uh, let's talk about the configuration. So if you're thinking about uh, a library called Configurity, I highly don't recommend to use that because it adds a lot of unnecessary features. The syntax is uh, verbose. It adds more complexity than the value from my point of view. So if you have a, a something small, you don't have too many properties to pass, uh, using the system get n function is totally okay. I've seen that in production. The other option is the environ library that will give you a bit of a wrapper on top of that with some extra features. But um, I think the most solid choice really is the IRO library. It's a good balance between features and uh, uh, the complexity. So it's uh, really explicit. You just have your .edn file with your configuration and you see all the placeholders where you put um, put your uh, environment variables. So yeah, highly recommend and a big plus for that library. Cool. Let's uh, talk about uh, what we use uh, to spin up the HTTP servers uh, inside our services. So in all the places I worked, we just use uh, JT as the base. And on top of that, sometimes we had ring, sometimes we had pedestal. Uh, if we took talking about the HTTP routing, there are a huge list of libraries available. Uh, and to mention some, uh, they are BD, Rated, uh, Composure and Pedestal. And I don't have a um, good recommendation here. Uh, just go and try uh, some of those and find what you like the most. Uh, also, in the BD docs, there is a good uh, matrix comparing all uh, other libraries, and you can see all the features and what's different. So that um, could be really useful. Uh, the one thing I should say is if you're using a stack, something like ring on top of JT with the ring JT adapter and you use Composure on top of that, uh, don't be afraid. It's uh, not amateur code. I've seen that uh, in a lot of production code as well. So you're totally fine. Uh, one more library I should mention is HTTP kit. And it was quite popular, but um, I don't really recommend using that. And there is a reason for that. Uh, so the project itself is interesting and it has like the HTTP server part and the HTTP client part. So you basically have one library to do both. Uh, 
The problem is that it's not really uh, widely used. So if you at some point would like to integrate uh, some monitoring tool inside your uh, service, something like that supports um, Java auto instrumentation, a Datadog agent, a New Relic agent, or even the Open Telemetry Java agent, you'll be in trouble because HTTP Kit is not supported. So you won't see your uh, incoming uh, requests and you won't see the distributed traces for your outgoing HTTP requests. So you will have to do manual instrumentation or migrate away from the HTTP Kit. And I'm just saying that uh, because I was just doing this migration not long ago. In addition to the HTTP service, let's talk about the HTTP requests, because usually we have to do uh, some HTTP requests in our services, and we need to pick a library for that. A good choice for that will be a CLJ HTTP, uh, which is using a Apache HTTP library under the hood. It has a lot of features and we use it uh, almost in all services in production. Uh, but if you are on Java 11 or higher, potentially you want to use uh, the built-in Java HTTP client, which uh, seems to be good starting from Java 11. And there are a couple libraries that are wrappers uh, of this Java API enclosure. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't touched them too much, so I won't give you any suggestions which one to use. Uh, so explore on your own. But anyway, if you pick the CLJ HTTP and you don't mind extra dependencies for this Apache HTTP client, you'll be totally fine. So the next one is working with the relational databases. And that should be a quick one as well. So uh, the, the standard for the GDBC library now is the next GDBC. Uh, for the uh, connection pools, in most of places, uh, we were using the Hikari CP, works fine, and we have no problems with that. Uh, moving to the writing the SQL queries itself, um, I would consider two uh, different libraries with two slightly different approaches. One is called Honey SQL, um, and the other one is Hug SQL. So the Honey SQL, uh, the idea is that, that you write your SQL uh, and use the closure maps uh, to define your SQL queries. Uh, the benefit of that is that uh, when you define your SQL query as the closure structure, you basically has access to all the functions to manipulate that data. So you can add conditions and uh, change your query with with the code. Uh, the, the other one I mentioned is Hug SQL, uh, and we use that a lot right now. Uh, the ID is different. You basically have your plain .sql files in your project, and then you define uh, queries or update, insert, delete statements in that files. And on top of each section, you will have a small metadata as a comment with the name. And then inside your closure code with that library, you can literally use that uh, name as a function, and then you have some API to call or execute these uh, SQL statements. So, um, as I said, uh, these two libraries were used more uh, mostly in production. I worked, uh, and uh, it was kind of like 50-50. Uh, I don't have a one recommendation, so just uh, go compare your, those library yourself and uh, select what uh, what you like most. Cool, the next topic is schemas and validation. And I have here three options for you. So first one is the schema library and old classic, uh, still good choice, uh, really uh, fast to learn and easy to use. Second option is closure spec and um, the good thing about that is is part of closure, so that means no extra dependencies. Uh, but uh, from my experience, it has a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but yeah, eventually it will do the job for you. So and the final one, uh, the library called Mali. 
I haven't used it uh, use it much, uh, but heard really fantastic feedback. Uh, so that should be a good uh, choice of a library um, as well. By the way, uh, consider subscribing to the channel because I'm planning the Learn With Me video where I'll take a look into the Mali library. Cool. In this section, let's talk about some other libraries that are commonly used in the production code. Uh, so the first two are core.cache and core.memoise. Uh, good choices if you want uh, extend the functionality for your memoise functions or you want some type of a cache inside your application. Uh, second one is chorusing, and it's a really interesting topic. Uh, so the library itself is great and it's just like a masterpiece. Uh, but if you're thinking to use that, just think twice if you really need it, because it's really easy to over-engineer uh, and use this library where it's actually not required. So be really careful. And the final one, uh, which is uh, final one that I really recommend, is the Claypool library. And if you want uh, some cheap option to run your tasks in parallel that's a perfect library for you so it will be a wrapper around uh, java execution framework when you have access to different thread pools and the syntax is similar to uh, like map and pmap functions that you have in closure the only difference is that you will be able to pass your thread pool as an argument to that function so your uh, pmap will be executed on a thread pool and it will it is really useful if you have something like a uh, hundred of requests to spin uh, we all know that a core function the pmap is not suitable for that cases it's only for the cpu intensive tasks so keep that in mind cool we almost did it so the final topic will be some additional tools uh, that are commonly used in the production services. First one is CLJ FMT, which is their code formatter, and it's quite important to keep uh, your code consistently formatted across multiple uh, projects. Second one is CLJ Conda, which is the linter that we usually use. Uh, and a good thing about those two uh, tools I mentioned is that they are available as native images so the startup is really fast and you won't spend extra time uh, waiting for this task to complete. And the final one which actually should be a separate video but I'll mention it here is the Babashka uh, which is uh, a tool that allows you to write uh, your scripts in Clojure. Uh, so we use it quite extensively right now and we are rewriting the entire um, CI pipelines and all the scripts uh, uh, used in CI uh, in Babashka and are really happy with the results. It's really good that you don't have to touch your bash scripts again. Big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the content useful and I gave you some insights into the production closure code. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're interested in more closure content, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Have a lovely day and see you in the next one.